Alright gang, we're tackling another perfumer today. It's Jean-Claude Elena. Are you a fan of this perfumer? We've got 20 fragrances here. No bonuses today, no bonuses in this video. And so we're doing this video ranked in chronological order. So we're starting off with one of the very first fragrances that Jean-Claude Elena has created, all the way down to some of the most recent ones. This is not everything, this is what I have in my collection. I do have others, but since I cover similar fragrances and similar collections from the same brands, I basically featured one or two, because obviously everybody knows that uh, Jean-Claude Elena worked at Hermes, he created so many fragrances there, plus he's done several for brands like Frederick Mall, we've got Paris Monte Carlo, uh, and also Laboratorio Olfativo that he's like cranking out fragrances for. But I'm trying to do a nice variety of different uh, fragrances from different brands. So today it's all about Jean-Claude Elena. If you're interested in finding out about his creations, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in, this is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about Jean-Claude Elena fragrances. I first kind of discovered him as a perfumer for Hermes, obviously. One of the very first fragrances of his that I smelled was En Jardin en Méditerranée. Of course, he created the Hermes Jardin collection fragrances. And for that house, I believe he created four. And then Christine Nagel has created one, and then there's another one coming for that collection. So that's when I first discovered En Jardin and Mediterranean. And then, of course, I read an article about Jean-Claude Elena with the creation of Terre Hermes. So why don't we go ahead and get started with the first fragrance. This is from the House of Sicily. This is Eau de Campania. This, was, this is it right here. This came out in 76. It's very fresh. It's very herbal. It's very green. It's bitter and somewhat floral as well, and it's perfect to wear in the heat featuring tomato leaves and of course there's oak moss here, there's galbanum, there's vetiver, there's patchouli, musk, lily of the valley, some uh, light fruitiness in there as well but I feel like if you like the idea of a very fresh fragrance, you like the ideas of fragrances like 4711 and those kind of like uh, you know cologne style fragrances but you want some bitterness you want some greenness some change of uh, variety there or you know the uh, addition of something uh, totally different try Eau de Campania that's one of Jean-Claude Elena's very first creations but he also created another fragrance in the 70s let me tell you something about the first fragrance Eau de Campania is a unisex fragrance this next one is a feminine targeted release there's gonna be women's fragrances here we're, we're gonna find uh, men's fragrances here and then of course lots of unisex offerings as well but the next fragrance is for the house of Van Cleef and Arpels it's called first it's first of Van Cleef and Arpels it is definitely a feminine targeted release it's also very aldehydic and floral came out in 76 same year as Eau de Campania uh, definitely has a uh, you know stuck around for this particular brand and it, it kind of takes uh, you know modernizes uh, something like Chanel number no. five because it's definitely aldehydic and of course Chanel number no. five came out in the 20s this this fragrance itself uh, definitely came out in the 70s and created by Jean-Claude Lena. So Narcissus, Hyacinth, Civet, Oak Moss, Lily of the Valley, Carnation, Honey. A lot of other notes but definitely this is something my mom wore and she actually really loves still and I'm glad to discuss it here as one of the very first fragrances that Jean-Claude Lena has created. It's first by Van Cleef and Arpels. So moving uh, fast forwarding to the 90s, uh, again I don't have every single Jean-Claude Lena created fragrance here so we're jumping to the 90s. This is a fragrance for the house of Bulgari, this is Tevert, this one right here, launched in 1992 and it's become a pretty popular staple for this particular house and definitely tea and also very powdery here and of course it's cozy, it's a uh, definitely cozy, a bit musky for sure and then of course it's got floral touches in there. There are some light spices with cardamom, there's coriander, of course bergamot, lemons and orange blossom but I feel like it's a nice balance of a fresh uh, jasmine and also tea together and it creates for kind of like a jasmine tea experience for me and definitely very very powdery so Tevert from the house of Bulgari is the third fragrance launched in 1992 by Bulgari. So fast forwarding six years to the future in 1998 uh, Jean-Claude Elena created a fragrance for Cartier, Cartier called Declaration, this one right here launched in 1998 and I feel like this is a very iconic and popular release for this house. It's definitely 
slightly very spicy woody and of course this has these kind of orangey touches as well and it's got cardamom bitter orange caraway black pepper birchwood coriander ginger and vetiver so I feel like it's a masculine offering definitely it's top-notch release for Cartier and also for Jean-Claude Lena creative fragrance and definitely still even today after many years of this particular fragrance it still smells great although the parfum version that came out several years ago of Declaration was then redone by Mathilde Laurent who was the in-house perfumer of Cartier but I think what Jean-Claude Elena started is definitely great scent so Declaration is the fourth fragrance now fast forward to the year 2000 going to the house of Frederick Mall this is Angelique sous la pluie this one right here and this is definitely a very kind of autumn like presence with this particular fragrance. Also a bit vegetal and powdery as well. And I feel like this particular fragrance is kind of savory for me. It wears savory. It doesn't have a lot of sweet notes in the in the mix to create a more of a sweet experience. And that's why I feel like it takes on a kind of a characteristic of something savory. But it's Angelica prominent. That's why it's called Angelique sous la pluie. And then of course you've got pink pepper, cedar, coriander, and musk. Definitely a release that's worth checking out from the house of Frederick Mall. That is the fifth fragrance launched in 2000. And fast forward to 2001, we've got Cologne Bigarade and a great, great fragrance here. Really a wonderful offering from Frederick Mall and of course uh, the, uh, uh, the created by Jean-Claude Elena. This to me also kind of reminded me of um, one of the Terre de Hermes flankers that just recently got discontinued. I, can't remember if this is still selling. From what I remember, it's still selling. But it's bitter orange, green grass, hay, cedar, rose. It's fresh. It's also kind of very citrusy. The bitter orange is very, very prominent here. And it's like the kind of fragrance you can wear in the summertime and overspray it. It's got some musk and funk thrown in there as well. But lightly contrasted with the bitter orange, I think it smells heavenly. So Cologne Bigarade at number six, or the sixth fragrance I'm talking about today. So up next, going to the house of Amouage. I didn't realize that Jean-Claude Elena had created an Amouage fragrance, but I discovered that a couple years ago and it was great to get this particular fragrance. This is Dia Woman, this one right here. So Dia Woman, once again, is an aldehydic fragrance, just like First from Van Cleef and Arpels, uh, but they are definitely a little different. Uh, I think you'll notice the similarities with the aldehydes and that's pretty much where it stops. Dia Woman came out in 2002 and it also features peony, white musk, cyclamen, Turkish rose, heliotrope, sandalwood, orris, violet, and a lot of other things going on in here. So it creates for a powdery wear, but definitely got that kind of light fizziness and then the, the lift like, uh, you know, um, presence in the fragrance to make the fragrance not necessarily very heavy. So Dia Woman is the seventh fragrance I'm talking about today, launched in 2002. And this is got to be featured here. This is how I kind of discovered Jean-Claude Elena later with Terre Hermes, but this is Un Jardin Un Méditerranée from the house of Hermes. This is uh, where Jean-Claude Elena created so many fragrances, and I don't have every single Hermes uh, fragrance created by Jean-Claude Elena, but uh, definitely this is a highlight for me. He created four of the garden fragrances. There's five currently, a sixth one is coming. This to me is so, so good. It's fig leaf, cypress, juniper, orange blossom, oleander, bergamot, lemons, mandarin, and musk. Wears very, very fresh. It was an instant love when I smelled this at a Nordstrom and I had to get it back in around 20, I believe I discovered it in 2004, but uh, it launched in 2003. It's very, very fresh. If you like something like uh, Fico de Amalfi, you got to check out Un Jardin Un Mediterranean. So this is the eighth fragrance I'm talking about today, launched in 2003. Then moving on to the house of Frederick Mall. Once again, it's Lode Ve, this one right here. This is a very classy male targeted release, but I think a woman can totally pull it off. It's definitely a kind of a powdery almondy touch. Lots of iris here and of course heliotrope. Heliotrope is very almondy to me, but not necessarily like gourmand almond. It's kind of like dabbling in almond, but it's an almond powder presence here. In addition to the iris and heliotrope, you've got white musk. There's Angelica here once again, uh, where he used, you know, Angelica um, completely in its, uh, you know, you know, full form. Here, it's more of a uh, supporting player in Lodive, but honey, bergamot, and jasmine, it smells fantastic. Very classy offering, very gentlemanly, but I feel like it's definitely unisex for sure. But again, this one, 
I believe it's still male targeted. So Lorive from the house of uh, Frederick Mall is the ninth fragrance, which is launched in 2003. And I should say we've got like four, maybe even five fragrances uh, here in my collection I'm gonna talk to you about all launched in 2003 that were created by uh, you know Jean-Claude Lena. So up next, going to the house of L'Artisan Parfumer. This is Bois Farine, this one right here. Again, 2003, once again, very powdery. This to me is very nutty smelling. It's just, all, it's got like all kinds of woods that are like chopped and shredded form and just imagine you're kind of like sprinkling it up in the air and that you know the smell you pick up and then throw in some nuts in there as well and that's what you kind of get with this one but it has powdery notes sandalwood iris benzoin woody notes kayak wood cedar musk jasmine it's a very unique fragrance definitely the nuttiness is there i almost get like peanuts with this one with woods and just imagine shredding you know peanuts and woods together that kind of powdery smell Boifarine from the house of L'Artisan Parfumer. Next, going to the house of the different company. This is Bergamot, this one right here. So I believe the different company was started by Jean-Claude Lena's daughter. I'm not 100% sure this is what I have heard. Maybe there's also another relative of Jean-Claude Elena's with this brand. I'm not 100% sure, as I said, but I believe that Celine Elena is part of this brand. But Bergamot is a very fresh Bergamot fragrance launched in 2003. And of course, if you like the idea of Bergamot, you got to check this one out. It's got some zing along with Bergamot, but it's overdose of Bergamot here with that zing from ginger. There's orange blossom, green notes, musk and rhubarb. So a bit fruity, definitely spicy, fresh and musky. This is Bergamot from the house of the different company. Company, and that is launched in 2003 as well. And then uh, one fragrance from the house of Hermes's Hermesens collection. This is uh, Ombre Narguilé for sure. I recently re-picked it up here uh, because, you know, I was, you know, hating this fragrance. I'm kind of back to enjoying it. Uh, after kind of spending a lot of time at, uh, 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 at Bloomingdale's here where they sell this collection, I kind of smelled everything and I was like, you know what, this does smell good. So I do like it. It's kind of a thinner version of Wajan and that's what I like about it. This launched in 2004 and was created by Jean-Claude Elena while he was there. And it's amber, toasted sesame seeds, honey, but there's definitely the cinnamon and a rumminess in here as well. It's a bit gourmand, but again, all the fragrances in this collection are eau de toilette. So they do wear a little light, but man, this is a really fantastic smelling fragrance. Ombre Narguilé is the 12th fragrance I'm talking about today, launched in 2004. And then up next, launched in 2009, but originally in the EDT, launched in 2006. I'm highlighting the Parfum version here. This is Terre Hermes. So I read an article about this fragrance in some magazine. It was like a tiny little article where they highlighted Jean-Claude Elena and the launch of Terre Hermes in 2006. Instantly went and bought it. And uh, I've been a fan since uh, I owned it in 2006, uh, but uh, I've kind of kind of gotten bored of it, but I think definitely a highlight of a fragrance for uh, creation by Jean-Claude Elena. This is orange with woods, flint, stone, oak moss, benzoin, grapefruit, vetiver, and all that kind of stuff, but it's definitely a very earthy, citrusy take on vetiver, and I do enjoy it. It smells fantastic, and uh, the parfum is definitely a lot concentrated than the eau de toilette, which is the original version. But this version came out in 2009, and the original in 2006. And fans of that one. Another Hermes fragrance. This is Voyage, the Hermes, this one right here. And one of the best, best, best representation for cardamom in a fragrance. This smells like a, opening up a jar of cardamom and it smells super authentic. It smells like literally like that jar of cardamom. If you've ever opened it up and smelled it, Wear this stuff and see how it uh, smells. So this is the Parfum version once again, launched in 2012. The original came out in 2010. Features notes of cardamom, juniper berries, sandalwood, spices, musk, lemon, tea, rose. Fantastic fragrance. It's that fresh spiciness of cardamom. Totally, totally come to life with some additional aromatics and woods and spices, musk, citruses and floral notes. Lovely, lovely fragrance. This is, as I said, one of the best fragrances that totally represents the, the note of cardamom. It just really wears like you're wearing cardamom. And then another Hermes fragrance. This is Equipage Geranium, launched in 2015. Uh, this is an update to the original Equipage, but this smells fantastic. To me, it wears a bit like a fougere. It's geranium, it's got spices, it's got sandalwood, and it's fantastic smell. It reminds me a little bit of Chanel Boy, uh, but uh, I really love geranium uh, as a note, as an ingredient. It definitely goes into the fougere 
Fougere barbershop direction. Of course, they use it a lot. And here, for me, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a barbershop aromatic spicy fragrance with woods. So this is Equipage Geranium from Hermes, launched in 2015. So skipping forward to the year 2018, going to the house of Houbigan, this is Essence Rare, this one right here. God, this is so, so good. I can't believe how good this particular fragrance is. It is female targeted, but I've smelled fragrances like this that are unisex targeted. Uh, it's very powdery and a bit makeup-y as well, but it utilizes rose with iris, jasmine. Of course, it has powdery notes. There's oak moss, there's citruses like mandarin. There's a bit vanilla in here and amber, and of course, woods of sandalwood. And to me, it smells like a floral take of makeup. Like, totally reminds me of makeup, like you're wearing like old-fashioned makeup uh, like your mom used to carry in her purse and you smelled it when you opened it up kind of a thing. But imagine she has a bouquet of flowers that are very fragrant along with that makeup kind of a thing. So Essence Rare is just a really, really beautiful fragrance. I hope you guys get to try that one. But moving forward to the year 2019, it's Rose and Queer from the house of uh, Frederick Mall. I absolutely love this one. And this one also utilizes geranium. He used it here in Equipage Geranium. And this one here, the geranium takes on the rosy characteristic. Of course, geranium definitely has rosiness and also mintiness. And here it's highlighted really, really prominently. And I love that about it. This is a great Frederick Mall release with Timut pepper, geranium bourbon, cassis, vetiver, cedar leather. And uh, it's an amazing fragrance. If you like the idea of rose, but not with rose, but with the geranium, because the rose in here is very green and it doesn't really smell like a full rose, but there's definitely a rosiness in the background, but more like salad like like, like greens chopped up, uh, stems of roses chopped up, and that's what you get with Rose and Queer. Number uh, the 17th fragrance, launched in 2019. Going to the house of uh, Laboratorio Olfativo, this is Mandarino, launched in 2020. So this to me kind of reminds me of some of the fragrances that he, uh, Jean-Claude Elena did for the garden collection at Hermes, but these are more like, you know, you know, paying tribute to the citruses, the different citruses, because these uh, green bottle fragrances are all for citruses. And the Mandarino is my favorite of the collection. Really love its coziness with the Italian tangerine here. It's got that a bit of zing and a little sweetness. There's black currant here and of course white musk. And I really love it when it's really, really hot outside. Don't wear this when it's really, you know, cold. It's kind of light. They call it a parfum cologne concentration, but I feel like they're definitely like eau de toilettes and very, very light wearing. But the Mandarino is amazing. That's the 18th fragrance I'm talking about today. Up next, going to the house of uh, Paris Monte Carlo. It's Lavande Romaine, this one right here. So there are several other fragrances in this collection. I picked the Lavande because I really do enjoy the Lavande here. It smells like the south of France for me totally does uh, because there's a lot of lavender there. But this features notes of black currant leaf. There's lavender, of course, white musk and cedar. It's fresh, it's herbal, it's aromatic, a bit spicy, but definitely kind of has its soapiness and uh, light, um, you know, uh, clean kind of a smell is what I'm trying to say, like soapiness and cleanness. But either way, Lavande Romaine uh, it is the 19th fragrance from 2020. And then going back to the house of Laboratorio Olfativo, my second favorite in this collection of the green bottles, this is Arancha Rosa. This one launched in 2022, and it's really a great smelling uh, blood orange with some fruitiness in there. It smells like blood orange juice, if you guys have ever had it, and uh, in Italy especially, because that's kind of where pretty much um, I love to drink the blood orange juice. That's what this smells like. It smells like blood orange juice and it's really fantastic. So blood orange, there's orange flowers, passion fruit and white musk, really delicious. And that's the last fragrance I'm talking about. And again, these are not ranked. They're in uh, chronological order. Uh, one of the very first fragrances that uh, Jean-Claude Elena created is this uh, Eau de Campagne from Sisley. And then of course, uh, this uh, Arancha Rosa from Laboratory Olfativo from 2022. Let me know if you're a fan of this perfumer. Let me know if you have another favorite fragrance from this perfumer. I'd like to find out, put a comment down so I can find out. You know, there is a whole collection of fragrances that I saw that uh, Jean-Claude Lena did for Le Couvent Maison de Parfum. I didn't, don't have any of those fragrances, but I've seen them in France. And um, they used to have a 
couple of fragrances that were very popular in the community. One of them was Cologne of the Missions. They've rebranded and they have launched a ton of new fragrances and of course a bunch with uh, Jean-Claude Elena. If you have you know, sampled those fragrances and you enjoy them, let me know what I should check out. And also let me know what other perfumers you'd like to see videos on. I know I've done a lot of different male fragrance uh, perfumers, I should say, and uh, we've done uh, Francois de Marche, I've done uh, Quintan Biche, there's a video for Alberto Morillas, uh, Francis Kirkjan, uh, Francois de Marche, did I say him? Uh, and there's probably others, but there's a couple of female ones. I'd like to do another female perfumer. I've done uh, videos on Nathalie Lorsan and Cecile Zorokian, but let me know what other perfumers you'd like to see. And also, other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.